Gentlemen, it is that time of year again when we have a new game just around the corner and I wanted to spend some time to break down a lot of the features that were in the reveal that might have been a bit more secretive or a bit more overlooked that other people haven't covered so far. So let's jump straight into it. This clips from the gameplay reveal and you can see as this is an AI car at Spa, the temperatures are at 98 degrees. Now I bring this up in particular because the AI tire temperature differentiates from that of what it would be in F122. You can see on this clip of F122 on the fifth lap of a five lap race, the AI is actually at 92 degrees and it pretty much stays locked in at 92 degrees. This could mean that the AI are interacting a bit differently with tire temperatures. Maybe they are less restricted and the tire temps will run a bit higher in comparison to last year. They could have also remodeled the way the tire physics works and the way temperature builds up. And also we have to account for the handling model being more grip means that you can carry more speed into the corners and therefore drive up the temperatures that way as well. Moving on, we've got some new tracks and some new track changes, but missing out on those changes is Spa. It seems that the track hasn't been remodeled and it's desperately in need of some remodeling to bring it closer to real life, but unfortunately it seems to have missed out this year. Some laser scanning would be brilliant. Singapore also doesn't seem to have the new updated layout for this year, which is the first time they'll be running it, has a new layout, especially in the third sector. But as you can see from this small clip at the end, it doesn't appear to have had any changes from the cutscene that was shown in the Breaking Point trailer. One thing that has definitely been changed though is the Austria circuit. I'm not sure what makes them pick uh, particular circuits, but uh, this time Austria has received updates as you can see, particularly going up the second straight, you can see the other layout that other racing categories use. Uh, that's definitely just always welcomed uh, to have those new updates to a track. You can also see in the side by side that the inner left hand side curb has been changed and a little bit raised there as well. So there was also a couple of suspicious things that I saw in the gameplay reveal and that included you can see in the bottom right corner the throttle going down and up and down as if the player is trying to stick with the AI. I'm not sure what they were trying to do if they were just trying to showcase the AI racing a bit better at Austria but uh, they intentionally slowed down for some reason in this clip. Another thing that was sus was the audio really didn't synchronize up for this particular clip when they're going around the right hands in Singapore. No idea why, maybe they're trying to hide a radio message and they just use some audio from a different part of the track. I'll play the raw footage for you guys to listen. Tires and how this interacts with the inertia of the car itself. Strange, isn't it? Uh, Moving on, uh, we have some newly redesigned floor. So that means the car is definitely going to interact slightly different with curbs. Uh, might not make a huge difference, but it'll definitely put it in a more realistic direction. Controller users will now have the ability to customize their steering in F123. That means they can adjust their steering rate. They can adjust a bunch of other things, which is a massive deal, especially if you're a controller user, because that means it can bring them closer to the performance of a wheel without needing to sink all that money into a top of the line or even an entry level steering wheel. Controllers can't steer left to right immediately at high speeds because there is a form of resistance or dead zone in there. So steering rate would probably be a customization for that. There were some people that believed that there was a timed braking feature for pit stops now, but I don't believe that is the case because what the graphic they were uh, pointing at, as you can see at the end of the pit box, that's actually already in F122. So I just wanted to call that out and I don't believe there's any more additions to the braking of a pit stop. While we are looking at Silverstone, there was rumors from beta testers that they have uplifted and made updates to the Silverstone circuit, but that is to be taken with the grain of salt. Red flags have been added and they can be caused by debris being left on the circuit, cars crashed and stopped on the circuit, but most importantly, they can be brought out by torrential rain. Now, the question is, will it always activate when rain is at a specific level or is it just a chance-based system when the rain is at a certain intensity? We are yet to find that out still. One thing we do know is you can customize the frequency of the red flag just like the safety car. You can also change tires and fix damage. We've got the new tracks of Vegas and Qatar. Obviously Vegas can't be laser scanned because it doesn't even exist yet. I know the streets exist, but uh, they did their best with the data they could collect from images and such. However, they had all the data on Qatar, so expect that to be really close to real life. I do like Vegas because it's incredibly vibrant and there's a lot of detail in the city itself and the Las Vegas Strip. 
Looking forward to Qatar because of just the realism experience. You can see all the details, even the markings on the curb and the undulation of the track seems to be pretty accurate in my opinion. You can see Code Masters have gone for a yellow tinged lighting filter this year. This does in fact bring it closer to real life and just adds a bit more cinematic effect to the game itself. They've made a big step up with the graphics in particular with the lighting. You can see this uh, at Singapore in this clip as well just the floodlights as they come down on the track. It, it definitely seems that there's a level of density that wasn't there originally in F122. You can also see in the side-by-side -side between F123 and 22, there's a lot more of a glow on the F123 side compared to the F122 steering wheel. I think that's just a nice touch and they've also updated the, the dash on the steering wheel itself. The handling model has been updated for this year's game. It's a lot easier on traction, braking, and the tires feel a lot more loaded uh, when you're going through a corner. This is all feedback from the beta testers, so it is subject to change when the game actually does come out. I'll be getting my hands on a build of the game next uh, this week or next week, so stay tuned for that and subscribe because I'll be giving you gameplay as soon as I'm allowed to give it to you guys. We've also got a new heads-up display from where the throttle and brakes are showing, and also in the top left and top right corner where the sectors display this has all been updated to reflect what it looks like in real life as well these were changes that probably should have been made to the game a long time ago but it's so great to see that it reflects what real life shows uh, when you're watching a live race itself. We now have 35% races to add more variety to race distance, uh, whether that be single player or multiplayer, which is pretty self-explanatory. We've also got the addition of Breaking Point 2.0, which is extending that storyline. And also we've got F1 life being replaced by F1 world. For career mode and multiplayer car, we have a new FOM car, which looks a lot better than last year's car and a lot more of a representation of what an F1 2023 car might actually look like, whereas the last year's car was a lot more unrealistic in comparison to what a lot of cars looked like in real life. In addition to this, we have a new safety rating system for both multiplayer and it also introduces elements from single player. So I think if you go smashing things in single player, <laughs> it might actually negatively impact you uh, when it comes to finding online race. Uh, it remains to be seen how that works in particular, but it is closer towards an iRacing system is what I've heard. With the performance of F122, a lot of people have reason to be skeptical of if F123 is worth buying. And my opinion is let's stay tuned. Let's see what we get uh, from early gameplay footage. What we've been shown so far is promising, but we're still looking for an anti-cheat. That'd be brilliant. Some more changes and some laser scan tracks would be great. And I uh, will see what they do with the R&D of career mode. But until then, I'm excited to see what else comes. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below, and I'll see you all in a brand new video.